Hi, my name is Tony Van Veen, CEO of Discmakers. Welcome to part five of my series exploring the pros and cons of being signed to a label versus remaining independent. So far, we've already explored the pros and cons of remaining independent versus being signed to a major or to an indie label. Now, if you've missed any of the previous videos, there's a link in the video description below, and I strongly recommend that you start there so you don't miss anything. Now, if you've been developing your craft for a while as an independent artist, and you've been successful building your fan base, then there's a good chance that at some point in time, you're going to get approached by a label. And that's always a super exciting moment. And most artists are tempted to jump in with both feet. And certainly, as we've seen in my previous videos, there are many advantages to being signed to a label. But if you've watched those videos closely, you know there are also lots of drawbacks and risks. So how do you set yourself up for success when a label comes calling? Well, you have to do your due diligence. What does that mean? It means you have to ask lots of questions of the label and of others, you know, kind of like a reference check, to make sure that you can maximize your opportunities and minimize your risks. And frankly, it's not just about making sure you set yourself up for success once you're signed. First and foremost, you want to make sure you don't get ripped off like happens to many artists when they're signed. Okay, so let's talk about what kind of questions you should ask. Most of the time, when artists get some kind of label interest, they're just so excited to have this opportunity that they don't ask enough questions. Sometimes they're afraid to ask pointed questions out of fear that the label might back out of a deal. Or they think that everything will be fine and the worst case scenarios just won't happen. And of course, all of this can really set an artist up for disappointment. Because when you make a potentially life-changing deal with a label, you must know exactly what is going to happen when you work together with that label. When things go well and when they don't. Now, full disclosure here, I personally have never had to negotiate a large label contract but I have negotiated plenty of other large deals and contracts, including buying and selling whole companies. So if a label came and offered me a deal, here are the questions that I would ask that label to make sure that I was clear that this was going to work for me. I would focus on two main areas, the financial and business aspects and the creative component. So let's start with the financial and business. Of course, to start, you want to be very clear about how the monies will work. Like what will be the revenue split between you and the label? Like what percent for you? And how will it be calculated? As a percent of what? Of the retail price? How do you calculate retail? What about a streaming royalty? Then you want to be clear when they will recognize that revenue in their books and how long it will take before you get paid. Now, if you have the right lawyer, a music entertainment lawyer, they will help you figure this out. But it's really clear to know when the cash is going to start coming in. How long is it going to take Spotify or a physical distributor to pay the label? How long are they going to hold the money? And then how long is it going to take before you get your piece? Related to that, you also need to be clear on what will happen if you got an advance from the label. How will it get recouped? Will you see any royalty payments at all before you're fully recouped? What happens if your album never recoups? Or if you're never recouped by the time you've fulfilled all the releases required contractually? Will they keep you locked up on a contract then until you are actually recouped? Of course, you'll also need to be 100% clear about intellectual property rights. Like who will own which percentage of the publishing, for example. And importantly, is there a point after the contract has been fulfilled that those IP rights can revert back to you, including potentially the ownership of the masters? Don't sleep on this point. I know one artist who later on in his career 
went independent. He was on a major label. He went independent and a few of their album recording rights, the master recordings, reverted back to the artist. And he ended up selling many less units than he had before on the major label because he was independent. But he made more money in two years being an independent artist and collecting 100% of the royalties than he had made in over a decade on the label. You will also want to get some clarity on how the label will work with you. Like who will you work with at the label? What experience do they have? Are they just setting you up with their newest hire? Or is it someone who can actually help move the needle for you and your music career? And you'll want to know what kind of investment they're going to be making in developing you as an artist and your music career. How will they develop you and how will they make you successful? What kind of promotional budget and resources will they make available for pushing your music? Don't let them tap dance around this point. You need to get specific answers. As an indie artist, you're already spending money on promotion. The label should spend significantly more if you are ever to make more money being on the label where you're getting a much smaller cut than you do as an independent artist. And finally, you'll want to know clearly what they will expect from you. Not just during the creative process, but also from a, a, a business perspective. How much of the marketing hype do they expect you to create? What kind of touring do they want you to do? You'll need to be clear on the division of labor. What will the label do and what do you need to do? Now, I can keep going with the questions and you probably have more questions. And the important thing is whatever questions you have, you want to be able to ask them and get clear answers. So in the interest of time, let's pivot to discussing some of the things that you will want to ask about the creative process. There are some critical things you'll need to figure out about how the creative process will work, mostly revolving around who gets to make the calls about your recordings and your graphics, etc. First off, I think you'll want to figure out how they can kill your career. Like they've done with so many artists by just not releasing their albums at all. Can they just keep saying no to each song that you write and in that way hold off your album release indefinitely? Are there ways you can hold them accountable for your album getting released just as much as they can hold you accountable for delivering quality songs? You'll also want to get clarity on how they expect the creative process to work. To what extent do they want the right to reject or change the songs that you submit? Some labels that I know accept everything an artist submits. Others want total control over what goes on your record. You need to be clear what's going to happen with your label. Will they expect you to work with their songwriters and producers? Or do you have more of a creative say? I'm not saying one is necessarily better than the other, but you do want to know. And one good way to find out what the label's intentions might be is to ask them what do they like most about your music or what do they like most about you as an artist. And then ask them what they like least or what they'd like to change or improve. Because when you have clarity on what they like and what they don't like, that will give you some insight into where down the road at some point they might want to interfere with your sound or with the creative process. Now hopefully you will be dealing with an honest label and you'll be able to get straight answers to your questions. Answers that work for you. If you don't like some of the answers, those may be points to negotiate. But there's also a chance that the label will try to be evasive in their answers or sweet talk you and blow smoke up your butt just to get you signed. How do you protect yourself against this possibility? The best way probably is to check references. Who should you talk to? Well, for starters, I suggest you try to talk to some other artists on the same label 
who are or who were at one point in a similar position like you are going to be as a new artist on the label and ask them about their experiences. What worked for them? What didn't work for them? What did they like? What exceeded their expectations? What were they frustrated by? Or you can talk to those artist managers. And next up, I would ask to speak to the person who is going to be your primary contact at the label. If it's someone other than the person you've been talking to all along. Does that person even know who you are? Are they passionate about your music? Asking them some of the same questions as you had asked the label, you know, about how you'll work together, should make it clear if you're getting consistent answers or if you're getting the runaround. And of course, if you know others in the industry, particularly your music attorney who has experience with that label, you'll want to talk to them as well. Now I'm going to say something that will be unpopular and will be hard to do for any independent artist. If you ask your questions and you don't like the answers or the answers are vague or inconsistent and you get that slightly uneasy feeling or maybe very uneasy feeling in the belly, then trust your gut and walk away. Trust me on this. Being a struggling independent artist beats being screwed by a label any day of the week. Look, I know that walking away from a label deal that you're really excited about is something you're not going to want to do. But let me tell you something about negotiating. You have to show that you're willing to walk away from the deal if you want to get the best deal. Most high stakes business negotiations I've been a part of in my career have broken down at some point. I have walked away from some, the other party has sometimes walked away. And most of the time the deals have come back and you'll end up with a better deal if you walk away from a bad deal. You see, the label wants you just as bad as you want them. They're not doing you any favors by signing you. They think they're going to have success with you. So if you show them that you're prepared to walk, you will end up with a better deal. And if you walk away and they don't come back with a better deal, it may not feel good, but you can be thankful that you avoided a bad deal. Now, one final piece of advice for getting a good deal from a label, get the best lawyer you can afford. And make sure it's a music industry lawyer, not your uncle, the corporate lawyer. Music contract negotiations are tricky and involve industry specific concepts like advances and royalty rates and recoupment schedules and intellectual property rights ownership percentages that a non-entertainment lawyer just won't be familiar enough with to get you a good deal. And one final, final piece of advice. Many people won't ask some of the questions I suggested because they're too embarrassed to. They don't want to insult the other party. But trust me, if you're with the right label, they won't be insulted by your questions. They'll probably appreciate your engagement. And if they are insulted, then they probably have something to hide and you're better off walking away. So that's it. I hope you found this helpful and that you will put this info to good use if you get the opportunity. My next video will wrap up this series about independent versus label deal. In it, I'll discuss when you'll be ready to be on a label and what do you need to do as an indie artist for a label to be interested in you. And I'll talk about how to figure out whether you should go the label route or stay independent. I hope you'll join me then.